Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Jake Whip, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this 3D kinetic typography text animation inside of DaVinci Resolve using the Fusion page. But before we get into it, if you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button as well as turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload a new video. And if you guys are into motion graphics and want to speed up your workflow, check out my motion graphics kit and the code down below can get you guys 20% off when getting that. But anyways, let's jump right into the video. So first we're just gonna grab another fusion composition, okay? And uh, this this is a pretty easy effect to t uh, make. It will not take that long. And it's easy to change the text later on. So if you guys don't wanna go through and create it yourself, I will have this available on my Patreon page. There's a link down below to where you guys can check that out. But anyways, uh, let's jump into this fusion composition. And now inside of here, first what we need to do is create the uh, big rectangle. So let's go ahead and grab a shape 3D, okay? And now if we just hit one on our keyboard or drag it up, it'll appear in this viewer, okay? And I can close on my media pool as we don't need that right now. And now inside of here, um, if I come over to the inspector, let's change the shape uh, to a cube. And now we can uh, uncheck the lock width, height, and depth. And what this allows us to do is change the width, height, and depth all separate from each other. All right, so what we're gonna do is come over to the depth, right click and then do expression. Now we can grab this little pick whip here and put it onto the height. And what this does is it'll make it so whatever the height is, the depth is also. So if I bring it up, as you can see, the depth is staying the same size, okay? And there we go. So let's go ahead and uh, this looks like about a good size, okay? We could uh, bring the width up a little bit more and we'll just bring the width up and then use the height and depth um, depending on how long your text is or how short it is, okay? So let's do that, and now let's grab a text 3D node, and just drag the end of it uh, into the end of the shape 3D, and that'll create a merge. And then with that, let's view that, and as you can see, none of that changes, and that's because there's nothing in the text. So let's just type text, this can be whatever you guys want, and that still won't change because the text is inside of this cube, and we want it on the outside. So let's go ahead and grab this uh, little blue arrow and drag it out. And now as you can see, we can see our text. All right, and to make this a little bit easier to see, come into the shape, come over to the material and make this black, okay? Because that's what's going to be anyways uh, once we finish the effect, so we can just leave it at that for now. Let's come to the text now, scroll all the way down, and then open up the extrusion group. And now if we bring the depth up, uh, we can just bring it up like halfway. Uh, we might want a little bit more in that, something like that. All right. And then what we'll do is we'll scale it until it is about the size of our rectangle. So let's do something like that. And let's go ahead and drag this back until it uh, starts starts um, disappearing into the shape. Okay, we'll do that. Now we can scale this, or bring this down until it is in the center. All right, that's looking pretty good. And now we can come back into our shape here and go ahead and change the width and just shrink it down till it's about right there and then bring our height down a little bit as well. And then just verify it's still in the center and we need to come back into the text and move it back. There we go. Now that we have that done, we want the text to be on all four sides here, okay? So let's just bring this up and then do shift space and add in a duplicate 3D node, okay? And now with this, let's set the copies to four. And now we have to come down to the X rotation and we just have to bring this uh, down, okay? Or up. All right, so as you can see, we need this to be at about 90 degrees. And how you figure that out is you do 360 degrees and then divide it by the amount of copies. Okay, so 360 divided by four is equal to 90. Now that we have that done, as you can see, they are all in the correct position. Okay, so now we're gonna work on shading, okay? So I'm gonna bring in this image that I have, just drag it right into Fusion. And now if we look at this, it's just this uh, 360 image that has some white, some black in it, and some gray, okay? And this is going to be our reflection map. So you guys can either capture these yourself if you guys have a 360 camera, or you guys can find some for free online. If you guys want, you can also create yourself an image inside of Fusion that you guys want to use, but I'm just gonna use this image. The next thing that we need, no matter what image you're using, is a sphere map, okay? And if we don't do this, it will not give the correct reflection look, all right? So that's what the sphere map looks, that is correct. Uh, so let's just bring that up. And the next two nodes that we need is the ward, and then the reflect. All right, and the word is going to be the color. Uh, so let's bring this to black, because we're gonna work on the shape 3D1, uh, and we want that to be black. So uh, we'll keep that black here, and then for the text, it will be white. So we'll duplicate that later. Now after the sphere map, uh, right click on the uh, output, and drag it onto the reflect, and that'll bring up this little menu, okay? And we wanna set this as the reflection color material. And once we do that, and view the reflect, as you can see, this is the effect that we are getting, okay? Let's go ahead and plug this into our shape. And now we have the reflection um, on our uh, cube. 
So at the moment, you can only see it up on the like the top things here. You can't see it on the front. And if we come into the reflect, that's because the face on strength is at zero. So if we bring that up just a little bit, uh, as you can see, it will be reflecting on the front. And it also has to do with the position that the texture is in. So we can add a transform after the media in one. And what we'll do is we'll just set this to uh, wrap, okay? And now if we just move this off to the side, we can shift the position of where our uh, sphere map is. Let's go ahead and view this off to the side here. And as you can see, it is just moving it, uh, but keeping all of the details. Okay, so let's just move it to something kind of like that maybe. All right, that's looking pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and make this for the text as well. So first let's uh, just copy the word and reflect. We'll paste that. And then we'll put the sphere map into the reflection color material again. And this time you can't just put the reflect right into the text. We have to use another node for that. So after that, do replace material 3D. And now we can just put our reflect one into that. And now our text uh, is also reflective. But because the word is still set to black, the text uh, defaults to black. So let's go ahead and set this to white. And now as you can see, we have our final reflection effect. And that looks pretty good. Next up, let's go ahead and drag down a render 3D and then also a camera, okay? And if we view the render 3D, we can come into the camera and then just drag it out until this box is in the correct position. So let's do something like that. Let's also drag down a background node and merge this up. And then do Control T on the merge node to make sure the render 3D is coming in as a foreground, which is the green input. Then put that into the media out and we can go ahead and view that. And then this background, let's just make it like uh, just kind of off white. Okay, so I'm noticing that the text is sticking off too much. So we can just easily fix this by moving the text in just a little bit, okay? So something like that. Now let's go ahead and make it so all of this is kind of bent a little bit. So after the merge 3D, do shift space and type bender 3D, okay? Now we can change the bender type to twist. And now if we go ahead and set the axis to X and twist it, um, as you can see, the cube is rotating correctly, but the text is not. All right, and what we want to do to fix that is come down here to group objects. And if we check that, now everything is bending together and correctly. So let's go ahead and bend this about 0.21. All right, and as you can see, that's looking pretty good. We can view the bender over here in 3D and go ahead and see what it'll look like with the reflections if we're rotating around. So now we need to actually disconnect the camera from that merge, okay? We need to add another merge over here and then put the camera into that one, okay? And what this allows us to do is then take all of this as if it were one object. So after the Bender 3D, add in a Transform 3D node. And now as you can see, we can rotate this uh, in, or separately. While if we just had the camera into this merge and we rotated it, um, as you can see, it wouldn't move. And that's because the camera is rotating uh, with the rectangle. So let's go ahead and put the camera into the merge 3D2. Come to the first frame in the transform 3D. We'll just set that to default. Add a keyframe, come to the last frame. And now depending on the speed that you want, uh, put it at however many rotations that you want. So I'm gonna do like 150. All right, now I've rendered this out and we can play it. And as you can see, that's looking pretty good. We got all the reflections working correctly and you can see it all on the text. So you guys can also adjust the intensity if you guys want, uh, cause sometimes that might be a little too much. Uh, depending on the case that you want to be using it. But I like this effect. So some other stuff that you guys can add at the end to enhance the effect is after the render 3D, let's do the prism blur, okay? And what we want to do is bring the blur strength all the way down. And now, we, as you can see, we have like a chromatic aberration effect going on. And you can do that by adjusting the aberration strength and the distance, okay? So let's go ahead and bring the distance down, so it's just a little bit and the aberration strength down as well. So now we just have this uh, slight uh, chromatic aberration effect going on. Another thing you guys can add is like a soft glow node, okay? And now we'll just add a little bit of glow to it. And we can come back to the edit page and go ahead and let this render. So just waiting for the red line to turn blue and we're ready for smooth playback. All right, so here we go. And as you can see, that is looking really nice. So this is a great effect if you guys want to take your motion graphics to the next level or just try out some new stuff. And once again, if you guys want to download this without going through and making it yourself, there's a link down below to where you guys can get that on my Patreon page. And it really helps me out if you guys support me via that. Well, anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed, please give the video a like as well as subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on a new video. Comment down below if you guys have any questions and I'll see you guys next time for another video.